All right, we are here at my Urban Worm Bag. And last time we were in here, we were working on our moisture issues. And I am so excited because I think it really worked out. As I checked on it, all the bedding over here was wet after a couple days. And then after about four days, I came in here and just misted it again. And things have been looking really fantastic. And these water bottles, I put in my freezer so they're frozen solid. And then I set them down here to kind of cool off the bin because of the sun that comes in from right over here and kind it hits it. But what we've done is we put a blind on this side of the bin to block the sun and it still has airflow around it so I am able to take that tarp up and things are really cooling down in here. So let's go ahead and dig underneath and see how things are going and you know like right away we've got a worm right there so they are up near the surface and doing their thing. I'm really excited for them. Now we gave them kind of a spread out feeding. We had been feeding like one area or in the middle or over here, but this time we spread it out and I bet they went through all of it because we gave them some lettuce and some bok choy stalks. I also gave a little piece of carrot as well as some strawberry tops and that was about 14 days ago. So I don't expect there to be much of anything as far as food and that is exactly right. But we do have some really nice active worms. So that is just fantastic. Let's go ahead and keep digging in. Now I'm gonna start, I said this last time, but I'm gonna start not digging quite so deep in here. We are starting to fill up. We're about one third of the way to the top in this urban worm bag, and they are making lots of castings for us. It's been going for about two months, so 61 days. And this is kind of the phase of a worm bin when things really start to take off. We get massive population boosts. We're able to eat more food, so we're going to give them a really big feeding. This is one of the temperature sensors, and it is on the kind of the sunny side of the bin. And it got up to, I think, 93 was the highest. So after that 60 days, I think they have <laughs> probably gotten up to maybe 3,000, you know, because they've got enough time to breed and then for those cocoons to hatch and become big worms themselves, like this one that's kind of scurrying away. Looks like a blue worm right there. This one right here looks like a red wiggler to me. Looking good. And here's that piece of broccoli that we saw last time. Big old fat worm right there hiding in there. So over on this side, I think, is the other temperature sensor. And sure enough, in this side stays about five degrees cooler than this side over here. So things are looking good there as well. So the other thing I'm noticing about this bin is that the smell is just a fantastic worm bin smell, which is earthy in nature. It almost smells like you're out walking in the forest on a trail or something like that. So that to me means that it's kind of a mature, getting to be a mature bin. It doesn't smell like shredded cardboard or wet cardboard. Doesn't smell like any kind of the stuff that we put in here. Here's an onion skin, not smelling anything like that. These these are kind of like paper. They take a, a bit of time for the worms to get all the way through them. But let's go ahead and set up. So like I said, I'm not going to dig down. I'm just going to kind of put the food on top. But I should probably put the temperature sensors down. This is great. You can see worms all over the place. So I'm going to put this temperature sensor pretty deep. And the hope is that I'm not going to take it out again until maybe it comes out the bottom when I harvest. And then here we'll put in the east side temperature. Again, same thing, just going real deep with it. There we go. So I got to tell you, as I was digging in, the moisture level just felt absolutely fantastic. So the misting is really working. So if you have a urban worm bag and you have it outside and you're worried about it drying out, definitely miss the bedding and you are going to be real happy with how that works. So I'm a big fan of misting. So here's what we had in mind to feed. We've got a lot of lettuce and carrots and kind of garden stuff there. And then in here is a bunch of our food scraps. And we're just going to kind of spread it out. I don't want to create any pockets of heat or anything like that. So one of the things that I love is as I'm filling this out, it's kind of tapered in. I get a lot of surface area so I can really spread out the food. And we had kind of been babying this bin a little bit. But now, you know what? We're going in with a bunch of banana peels which take a long time to get digested. So I am not worried about that anymore. We've got this thing going for about two months. So the worms have definitely shown me what they can do. I've got, I think, some apple and pear pieces here. Lots of, you know, the normal lettuce stalks and tomatoes and strawberries and even some limes, which some people say not to put in, but we have proven that the worm bins can take citrus and then finally we're going to add in some pumpkin and ultimately the executive producer wants me to clear out the freezer because i have a whole pumpkin in there that she wants me to eventually put in here but i think we're at least a couple three months away from that 
because I am really going to need to fill in the volume here and get a lot more bedding before I can just put a whole pumpkin in. So next, let's go in with some of our amendments. And this is just worm chow, which is expired grains and stuff like that from my pantry that I just put in my Magic Bullet blender and get it into kind of a powdery substance here. And that, along with these coffee grounds, are just food for the worms and another way of helping me get rid of it and getting some of the nutrients into my garden and to feed the worms. And then finally, we'll go in with some pulverized eggshells, which is just what I use for grit. You can use other stuff like crustacean shells. Some people use sand or azomite or rock dust, but it just helps them digest their food because they have gizzards. And then now we're gonna go ahead and dump in a bunch of bedding. And going along with treating this like a garbage compactor, I wanna be able to just throw in my paper towel rolls and toilet paper rolls and I don't have to worry about shredding them, kind of let this worm bin be my lazy worm farmer worm bin where I can just throw stuff in. Now all of this bedding I pre-moistened because of all my bins, this is the one that is most susceptible to moisture issues. And part of that is because it's new and it's outside, but also it is suspended in midair. So it has a lot of surface area that's kind of touching the outside air as far as this fabric goes. So it can kind of get rid of humidity fairly easily compared to, you know, my Vermi hut that's enclosed and has a lid and my tiny worm bin, which also has a lid and is a three gallon Rubbermaid tote. And then finally, my outdoor worm bin is a fabric pot, but that sits on the ground and has multiple layers of fabric over it. So this one just kind of off gasses the humidity much easier. But we have absolutely solved those moisture issues. I'm really excited about how this bin is doing and what's gonna happen to it in the future. It is really getting full and I know that this bin is absolutely gonna be a workhorse for me. I can't wait to make my first harvest and see how much castings it's gonna give me. And the other thing I can't wait for is to see how many worms this thing fills up with as they reproduce. So I hope you're all having a great day. I hope your worm bins are doing well. So happy vermicomposting everybody. Take care now.